All right, Tails, thanks for setting up the Discord server. I figured we could just use this so everyone could stay in contact. Don't mention it, Sonic. But you're right. This app is really convenient, and we probably should have used this earlier instead of radios and outdated stuff. Yeah, that was really dumb. I don't know why we did that shit, but whatever. Anyways, why did you want me to join VC? Well, while we wait for the next adventure that Sega craps out of its corporate anus, I figured we could just make content together to pass the time. Oh, that's not a bad idea, actually. Well, what kind of content are we going to make anyways? Well, tier list videos have been pretty timeless and entertaining content as of late, so I figured we'd do a list where we rank all of our games. That sounds like a good place to start considering we're familiar with our own games. All right then, what are we waiting for? Actually, we're waiting on one more person to join VC. Then we can start this properly. I figured three people's opinions would be enough. Oh, someone else is joining? Who is it? Hey, speak of the devil. What's good, Nux? What's up, guys? Damn, this shit is way less boring than watching that dumbass green stone all damn day. Oh, shit, it's Knuckles? I didn't think you'd be joining a VC anytime soon. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine, but wait a damn second. Isn't the age limit for Discord like 13? What the fuck are you doing here, Tails? Well, Tails was able to set up the server and bots and stuff, so just, uh, don't snitch, Nux. Oh, that's cool. I wasn't going to tell anyways. Your secret is safe with me. Thanks, Big Red. I appreciate it. Anyways, are we going to start this, Sonic? Yeah, let's do this. I've been entertainment starved for like a week. All right, then. Let me pull up the tier list. And for the record, we aren't doing fan games or any of that. Just officially licensed Sonic games. Maybe if this video does well, then we could do a list with the most popular fan games, though. I haven't played many fan games, but that sounds like fun, too. All right, I got the tier list up. And of course, what better game to start with than the original Sonic the Hedgehog? This game kickstarted the franchise. It was one of the most influential games in the market back then. Hold on just a second. This game is deserving of respect for sure, but the package overall is kind of mid. Wait, the mid? The package is mid? Dude, I know the game is old, but it's still fun. The only good zones in this game are Green Hill Zone and Starlight Zone. Everything else is either mid or worse. Oh, come on. I don't think Spring Yard Zone is that bad. Labyrinth Zone, Sonic. Fucking Labyrinth Zone. God, I'm glad I wasn't in this game. Actually, I think I'm siding more with Knuckles on this one. Most of the stages in this game don't really promote speed and aren't very fun to play. Still, I think we should give the very first game at least a B tier. All right, fine. I guess I can live with that. Luckily, things only get better for the Genesis games. Yeah, B tier works for me. Anyways, what's next? Next up is the 8-bit Sonic one. Okay, this version of Sonic 1 was mid. I can agree with that. Yeah, the screen crunch and minimized mechanics make this an extremely inferior version of the classic title. I agree that it isn't that great, but I don't think it's bad either. The screen crunch on Master System is way better anyways. I think it should get C tier. Yeah, that sounds right. As long as it's right. not above the Genesis games, that's okay. All right, and then there's Sonic 2 8-bit. Nah, this game is fucked up. The first game that introduces me also kills me in the bad ending. What the shitballs? And I don't think it needs to be said again, but still, it's inferior to the Genesis version. These games do have their charm and can be fun on Master System, but overall, I think I'll just throw this one in C tier as well. But now we're on to an absolute banger. Sonic 2 for Genesis fixed almost everything wrong with the first game. Easy S tier! That I can definitely get behind. This game added so many staples to the franchise, like the Spin Dash. And most of the zones are actually fun. Emerald Hill, Chemical Plant, Casino Night, most of them are bangers. Although some of the levels are a bit ass, especially Metropolis Zone. Holy fuck, that level is just cruel. But how could we forget that I was properly introduced in this game? It was so cool seeing me run around in 16-bit. This game is S-tier. Not as good as Sonic 3, though. Shut up, Nux. I didn't say it was. All right, cool it, you two. I'm dropping two in S-tier, and we're moving on to the Sega Sonic Arcade game. Uh... Hello, guys? I never played it! Yeah, same. I honestly forgot that existed. Oh shit. I never played it either. Fuck it. Let's just pretend it doesn't exist and move on to CD. Uh, I always found CD to be overrated, not gonna lie. It's overrated for a good reason, though. The music is top-notch and it added Metal Sonic and Amy. You act like Amy being introduced is a good thing. Oh shit, you're right. Never mind. Blatant Amy slander aside, I think CD is a good game. But it isn't without its flaws, specifically the time travel mechanic. Trying to get to the past and future is bullshit. I think I'd rather play CD than Sonic 1, though, so I'm willing to give it A tier. Is that good enough, Sonic? Yeah, that's high enough. All right, now we're on to another handheld game. 
Sonic Chaos. I definitely prefer Chaos to the last two 8-bit games. Not to mention I wasn't just a sprite swap in this game. As long as you're playing on the Master System, then this one can be a pretty fun time. Being able to collect the Chaos Emeralds and then skipping the act you were on was awesome. On the other hand though, the game is a little too easy and the ending blows. Not to mention that playing as Tails is basically playing on easy mode. It's a little easy, but otherwise is charming and can be a good time. I'd give it a solid B tier. B tier sounds good, but what's next? Oh god, is that Sonic Spinball? Man, that game is stupid! It's really not that bad, Nux. Aside from the music being mid, the sprite work looks good and the game is a good challenge. A good challenge? You call playing the first level for an hour while dealing with the game's bullshit mechanics and cryptic puzzles a good challenge? That just sounds like a big old skill issue, Red. What level did you make it to then, huh? I beat the game, dumbass. I beat all my games. Except Shuffle, that game is unbeatable. Okay, guys. Chill the fuck out, goddamn. While Spinball definitely isn't the worst game overall, you gotta admit, for a pinball game, it feels a bit too difficult. Especially in the early levels. All right, fine. That's fair, I guess. I'm down with putting Spinball in C tier, but no lower. It definitely should be going lower, but whatever. All right, we're back to the Genesis, and we're on Sonic 3. Easy S tier, this game is litty as fuck. Regardless of the fact that Nux is just vouching for this game because he's in it, I also say S tier. This game was super fun, and got even better when Sonic and Knuckles came out. Most of the zones are super fun, and the Blue Sphere special stages were fun to beat as well. Not to mention the music. Holy shit, the Michael Jackson tracks were fire. S tier. I still haven't forgiven Origins for replacing the music with such shitty remakes. Yeah, that was tragic. But next up is Sonic Drift, which was a mid-cart racer, to be honest. I remember playing this game for like five seconds before shutting it off and playing All Stars Racing instead. It's mid and going into D tier. And I'll just throw Drift 2 in there as well, since it's basically the same. But next up is Sonic and Knuckles, another S tier. Hold on there, Red. Sonic and Knuckles on its own isn't nearly as good as 3. Stop being biased just because your name is in the title. Shut up, little bro. This game's zones were just as fire as 3's zones. Not to mention my boss fight and Mecha Sonic. Sorry I got a side with Tails on this one, Nux. This game is still great, and it's the only one to have Hyper Sonic, which Facts. was peak. But otherwise, it isn't as solid as 3 on its own. Fine then. Can we at least settle for A tier? Yeah, A tier is fine. It's still a good game. But then, Sega decided to do the best thing ever. Here we go. They decided to make it so you could merge 3 and Knuckles into 1 to form the ultimate adventure. Oh yeah, peek in 3 and Knuckles is S tier without question. No arguments here. This is arguably the best Sonic game of all time, and most people would pick it as their favorite. Hell yeah! This game was such a good send-off for the Genesis games. Too bad it all went downhill from here. Shut up, Nux. Don't be like that. There's obviously still lots of good content after. But anyways, now we're on to Triple Trouble, which is the best 8-bit game in my opinion. I agree that it's good, but the only problem is that it didn't get ported to Master System. So we're stuck with the screen crunch. Yeah, I think this game could maybe have gotten A tier if it got an MA port. But right now, I think it should go in B with Chaos. Fine with me. Next up is Knuckles Easy S tier, bro. Holy fuck. This game is without question the best Sonic game on the market behind Sonic and Knuckles. The mechanics, added characters, bosses, music, everything is amazing. This game is near flawless and definitely deserves to be crowned an S tier. Nux, stop capping, bro. Give it the S tier, bitch! Holy shit, take a chill pill. I'm gonna be real here, you're tweaking if you think Chaotix is S tier, man. The controls weren't that good, and it's only really fun when you play it in multiplayer. Yeah, I gotta agree with Tails. The Chaotix were cool, and the music slapped like always, but other than that, uh, it wasn't fun, bro. I gotta say, B tier at best. Way too low, but whatever. Real ones know where Chaotix goes. And this isn't about the fact that this was the last game with your name on it, right? I don't know what you're talking about, kid. Anyways, what's up next? Next up is Labyrinth, and I just want to say that even for Game Gear standards, this game wasn't too good. I mean, this game was literally classified as the slow Sonic game. Did they forget that I literally only do the exact fucking opposite of that? Yeah, this game is fucking awful. It's literally just a shitty version of 3D Blast. Shitty controls, shitty level design, and shitty keys to find. While I personally find the challenge to be decent, I can see why this game is disliked. If you want to play a Sonic game like this, play 3D Blast. And with that, I'm throwing it into F tier. Oh look, and from one garbage game to another, we got Sonic Blast. Ew, this game is just disgusting. My sprite is so fucking ugly. Yeah, Blast aged really, really bad. It looks really muddy, and the gameplay is too slow. 
There's no reason to go back to this aside from sheer curiosity for when you get Sonic Origins Plus. While I don't think it's as unfun as Labyrinth, it's clear that this game is pretty shit. I'm fine with giving it D tier. No objections here. Let's move on to the actual Blast game. This game is good in terms of side games. The soundtrack slaps and the speed is a lot better than the shit show that Labyrinth was. Gotta say though, it got a little boring doing fetch quests over and over again. Not to mention, I felt a little floaty in this game. Way better than Labyrinth though, so I'd say B tier. B tier works. It was a pretty decent send-off to the Genesis games. Rest in peace, sweet Genesis. You'll always be missed. Hey, are you good, Nux? Sorry, I'm just grieving over the times when we actually put out good games consistently. Bitch, stop being so negative. I'm looking at the list and we still have tons of bangers left. Speaking of bangers, we got Sonic the Fighters. This should get at least an A. Fighters? You mean that jank-filled attempt at a quote-unquote fighting game? That shit goes in C-tier? Nah, you don't understand, Red. Sure, it's a little janky. But nothing beats playing with your friends in multiplayer. That's when it gets real fun. I agree with Sonic. Whenever we feel like trying this game again, multiplayer is where it's at. The added characters like Bean and Bark are also staples. Bean and Bark? Those guys. You think those dudes are at the top of Sega's list of staple characters? That's dumb as shit. Hey, don't talk shit about our homies like that. Look, just to get this over with, I'll compromise with B-tier. Oh, god damn it. Sonic R really ticked me off back then. Even multiplayer can't save this game. I'm actually kind of surprised you don't like this one, little bro. I don't think it's perfect, but I think there's some charm with it being the only on-foot racing game we have. There's not enough content for me. Sure, the music slaps harder than that one time I beat the fuck out of Egghead, and it can be fun if you get good, but that's it. The new characters were mid too. Who the hell thought of Metal Knuckles and Tails doll? Oh God, don't even get me started with that creepy ass doll. Nah, screw it. I'm with Knuckles on C tier. Damn, I guess I'm outvoted then. But now we're on an actual banger. Sonic Adventure is an easy S tier. Oh, for sure, S tier. Multiple characters with different play styles. A soundtrack that unsurprisingly slaps. Tons of collectibles and replayability. There's no way it's anywhere lower than S. You know I gotta agree with you both. While some things like the cutscenes haven't aged well, I'll still boot up this game on Steam every now and then and have a good time. Even if Big Story gives me PTSD whenever I even think about it. Speaking of Big, did we invite him to the server too? Sonic! I'm not even sure that fat ass knows what Discord is! Have you seen the way he just stares off into the distance? That dude is living in another planet, I swear. Let's just not tell him about it then. Anyways, next is Pocket Adventure. And I'm gonna be honest, even I forgot this one existed. From what I remember playing, it's just a standard 2D game with decent level design and music. Don't know why this game of all our games scored a 10 on IGN, but whatever. IGN are a bunch of fakes who don't even play the games they review. And as for this game, yeah, I don't give a shit. Just put it in B or whatever. Fair enough, I guess. Next is Sonic Shuffle, and oh god, this game is straight donkey dick. I'd rather cut both tails off than play this Mario Party ripoff. The CPU's cheat in the game is too slow and boring. F tier, please, and thank you. I'd rather recreate the events of Sonic 3 than play this steaming pile of dog shit. It goes into the depths of the list. Even F tier is too good for it. Glad we all share the same opinion for this mistake. Anyways, we got a goaded game again. Sonic Adventure 2? You know what? I'm gonna say it. Adventure 1 is better. Whoa, what, what? did he say? The hell are you smoking red? This better be good. You two chuckle fucks need to hear me out. I'll give it that the speed stages are good. Really good, actually. Some of the best levels in the entire franchise. But mech shooting is mid, and treasure hunting is even worse than Adventure 1. That's two-thirds of the game that's mid. But the multiple sides to the story, not to mention the story in general. It's one of the most Sonic-feeling Sonic games ever. Don't forget about the base as fuck, Chow Garden. You guys are focusing on the side shit. The gameplay comes first and foremost, and when two-thirds of the game is mid compared to Adventure 1, where only one gameplay style was mid, I think the first one takes it. You know what, Knucklehead? You somehow managed to convince me. But I still think the story of Adventure 2 can't be overlooked and should give it A tier. I can settle for A tier. People might hate us for it, but screw it. A tier. Next up on our list is Sonic Advance. Man, I love the Advance trilogy. They're all reminiscent of the classic 2D games while adding their own modern take on things. I gotta agree with that. While Advance 1 isn't the best one in the trilogy, it still holds up fairly well and offers a good time. Aside from all the bottomless pits in this game, it sure is my comfort Sonic game. I'd give it a solid A tier. Agreed. And now on to Advance 2, which I think we can all agree is easily the superior Advance game. I actually really like exploring for the special rings in each level, not to mention switching it up with different characters made the game more replayable. Oh yeah, destroying the bosses as cream and cheese was 
metal as fuck, haha! I say if we gave Advance 1 A tier, then Advance 2 should get S. Sounds good to me. Next up is Pinball Party. Seriously? Has nobody played this game either? No, I've played it. It's just... Uh, who gives a shit? Not me, that's for sure. Just throw it in C tier, I guess. Damn all right, fine. Next up is Sonic Battle. The best part about this game was Emerald. Everything else was okay, I guess. I never really got into this game myself. It just makes me wish for us to get a standard Street Fighter-like game. That would be awesome. Yeah, we need an official Sonic fighting game pronto. All right, I'll just chuck fighters in B tier. And next up is Sonic Heroes. Now, I want to say right off the bat that I think this game missed the mark on what made the adventure games so special. The individual teams were cool, but it kind of felt like you were playing the same game four times in a row. I gotta agree with that. Heroes isn't a bad game, but it's flawed in how the game is played. Although to sing its praises, the music is once again amazing, and the reintroduction of the Chaotix was amazing at the time. Oh yeah, I remember when that happened. Vector went ape shit and nearly crushed Charmy. That stupid B would have gotten what he deserved. Jeez, Nux, stop being such a menace. I don't care. We aren't on set, bitch. I can say whatever the fuck I want. All right, chill out, bro. Let's just go through a couple more games and then save it for another episode. I'd say we can put heroes in A tier. Works for me, then. Next up is the final advance game, Sonic Advance 3. I gotta say, this one is my least favorite. Nah, I really like this one. It's not as good as Advance 2, but I definitely think the team-up mechanic puts it above Advance 1. I don't mind the team-up mechanic, but I think the overall quality of the level design from Advance 1 puts it a bit above Advance 3. Normally I'd argue or something, but these games are so similar that I can't be bothered. I just put it in A tier again. I agree with A tier. All right, let's do like three more games and then we'll end the video. Next up is Shadow the Hedgehog. That edgy fucker's game? Left here, please and thank you. All right, I'll admit this game isn't all bad. As much as it tried to throw us into an edgy teenage kid Sonic fanfic, I think this game has some merits to throw it in D or C tier. The level design isn't too bad, and I like the concept of multiple endings. But the fact that you have to play the game from scratch over and over again with so many factors being able to change your run brings down the game hard. I just think it was funny when he said damn. Kinda, yeah. But I'm just gonna give this game a D tier. Hopefully Shadow doesn't see this and come to kick my ass. Well, next up is Sonic Rush. Man, I really love this game. It started the DS era of Sonic spin-off Strong. I got a side with Tails on that one. The boost gauge was introduced really well and the level design was tight. Not to mention Blaze was a cool character. I never finished this game, but from what I played, it was decent. I'll lend the wheel to you guys, though. I'd honestly say as tier, to be honest. For a Sonic game, it's really good. For a non-main series game, it's outstanding. It doesn't get much better than this. Looks like it's settled then. S tier for Sonic Rush. All right, and the last game for this video is gonna be Sonic Riders. As different as this game was, I honestly really enjoyed it. I quite liked it as well. The story was decent and the Babylon Rogues were good rivals for us three. Too bad this series got fucking bombed after that dumpster fire called Free Riders came out. You don't mention that game. I'm thinking A tier for Riders 1 solely because Zero Gravity is kind of the superior version. A tier sounds good to Yeah, end I it. think that's right. All right, and that does it for now. I gotta admit, this was a lot more fun than I thought. Yeah, I'm definitely down to do this more often with you guys. Maybe we can do tier lists on other things in the future, like other games and real life stuff. Yeah, I'm totally down for that, as long as nobody barges in the VC and tries to ruin the fun. Well, well, well. If it isn't the worst creature on the planet, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, God damn it! who invited this asshole? Tails, did you invite Eggman, really? I swear to God I didn't. I think he hacked his way in. You would be right, you two-tailed freak. Having an IQ of 300 works wonders for many things. That includes hacking into Discord servers. Well, fuck this then. I'm out of here. I gotta go work on the tornado anyways. Bye. Fuck you, fat ass. It's not over yet, you little rodents. I'll be back. Damn, Sonic, the new channel is looking goaded. Good work on the banner and icons and stuff. Yeah, I totally agree. Nice work, big bro. It wasn't too hard, to be honest. Just an hour or so in Photoshop and all that good jazz. Thanks anyways, guys. This channel is going to be fire. Speaking of which, we should probably finish up our tier list, right? It's been a bit since we started it. Actually, yeah, you've got a point. We should probably finish it up. Well, I'm down. How about you, Nux? Oh, you bet I'm down too. I can't wait to praise some greatness and shit on some garbage. Good to hear. All right, let me just pull up the tier list again. Um... 
Hello again, you miserable little rodents. I'm back again. Oh, come oh, on. Why the hell are you here, you dumb egg? Oh, quit your whining, freaks. The last thing I need to hear today is the likes of you complaining about me. Don't blame us for being pissed off that you of all people are here, egghead. Why the hell are you in VC anyways? I'm in the same boat as all of you. Now that we are finished all of our scenes for the upcoming games, I frankly have nothing to do. I figured conversing with somebody would be better than nobody at all. You know, despite everything, that kind of makes sense, actually. I don't give a shit if you're bored, old man. You see the VC name? Sonic Squad. Last time I checked, you aren't a part of it. All right, chill out, Nux. As much as I hate to admit it, we're all bored, and that includes Eggman. Ain't no way you're actually defending this bozo? Silence, you little red turd! Besides, what the hell do you expect me to do? We're in a VC, remember? Don't make me come over there and start cracking eggs! Quit it, guys. Knuckles just deal with it for now. Eggman can help us with the tier list anyways. It would be good considering he's in almost every Sonic game to date. Fine, but I'm not happy with it. So what do you say, Doc? You get to stay in the server, and in turn you help us with our tier list. I suppose I can provide an ounce of my time to assist in a tier list. Very well, let us begin. All right, let's get started. And for everyone tuning in, this is the second half of the tier list, so make sure to watch part one if you haven't already. A link will be in the description for you to watch part one. Just make sure to come back after you finish it. All right, let's start already, bitches. All right, I got the list already. First up on our list is none other than... Ah! Oh, God, no, the horror, the Vietnam flashbacks. Every time I see that icon, it sends me back to the Dark Ages. Sonic, you better put that garbage in the F tier right this second, or else I might do something really drastic. Okay, guys, hear me out. It isn't that bad. You must be tweaking, bitch! Uh, okay, it's bad. Like, really bad, but I don't think it's exactly F tier bad. The game could have been good if it was just given more time. But the gameplay is awful, the story is just cringe, and I can't see any reason to revisit the game outside of morbid curiosity. Not to mention my design, I look absolutely putrid. It takes a lot to ruin an image as handsome as mine. That is extreme cap, but whatever you say, look, as long as 06 doesn't get any higher than a D, I'm happy. All right, D tier works. It isn't a perfect game, but at least it's not completely terrible. Is that Sonic Rivals? I always forget that game's existence. It isn't a very notable entry in the franchise. I agree with Eggman for once. This game is just an obscure 2D racing game. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Yeah, and it for sure did not need a sequel. I'll just throw both Rivals games in C tier and call it there. Oh, jeez! Secret Rings! These Wii games were so trash, I swear! I hate the auto-running! While the concept of these storybook games are interesting, the gameplay does not suffice for them to be high-ranked games. Plus, Black Knight is just better, to be honest. Facts! I put Secret Rings in C tier, too. The designs and story go hard, but that's all. All right, then. What do we all think about Rush Adventure? While I personally find it inferior to the first Rush game, I still think it is a worthy successor regardless. I never really played this one, but I'm sure it's pretty good. I'll let you guys decide. Aside from surfing between islands and occasionally grinding, I think this game holds the spirit of the first Rush game. I'd give it either B tier or A tier. I definitely agree. Screw it, I'll give it A tier, why not? Oh, here we go. I think we can all agree that Rider Zero Gravity is easily the best Riders game. I concur! The story was improved on and the gameplay was of similar quality. Plus, anyone can agree that it is better than the game that came after. Oh, God. We'll deal with that piece of shit when we get there. Honestly, I'd say Zero Gravity should go in S tier. It's a top tier Sonic racing game. I'd personally put it lower, but I won't be upset with S tier. Yes, you better not be upset, you little nerd. Ain't no way the fat ass with 300 IQ is calling Tails a nerd. I am a brilliant genius, not a nerd. Get it right, pincushion. I am five seconds away from kicking you from this VC egghead. Shut the fuck up. Oh, you can try to get rid of me, but I'll always return. Maybe I'll revisit Angel Island again. I could use the Master Emerald for some alternative plan. Hands of mine. <laughs> All right, bitch. You're staying muted for the time being until you learn to stop being toxic. Egg looking ass calling me a nerd. Shut your goofy ass up. Now that that's dealt with, what's up next? Next up is Chronicles, man. I didn't like this one at all, to be honest. I've always felt like a Sonic RPG would be awesome, but this one missed the mark. Gotta agree with that. I think Shade and some of the other added characters were cool, but the gameplay is just boring, and the worlds are unfun to traverse. Well, I think that just about wraps it up in a shit-covered bow. F-tier this poor excuse of an RPG. Well said, guys. But next up is Sonic Unleashed. I'm honestly kind of mixed on this one. This game started the boost era. 
And I gotta say, the daytime levels in this game are absolute fire. Almost all of them hit hard. I definitely agree with you there, little buddy. But on the other hand, the Werehog levels are absolute trash. They take way too long and that stupid fight music plays every single time. And I definitely did not like going around collecting coins in those levels either. Dang, this is a tough one to rank. Personally, I'd go A tier. The boost levels carry the game hard, but the Werehog levels and need to backtrack bring it down quite a bit. Yeah, that sounds right. I'll go A tier too. All right, then A tier it is. Also, should we unmute Eggman now? Yeah, we should probably give him a chance. Maybe he's cooled off now. All right, fine, but I'm gonna talk to him. Hey, you old dick face. Talk to me or anyone else in this VC like that again and you're gonna get banned. You got that? Good, Mobius. Fine, you simple-minded echidna. If it will keep me here, then I promise to stop hurting your very fragile and limp feelings. That's basically as good of an apology as we're gonna get from Eggman. Anyways, now we're on to Black Knight. This is definitely the better storybook game, but only by a little. The controls are still kind of wonky, and the game still isn't exactly fun to play. It mostly came down to swinging your sword around like a buffoon. It definitely was not engaging, to say the least. Although I gotta say, that sword was awesome. And the armor I got to wear was sweet, too. Don't forget my design. My drip went hard in that game. Damn right it did. All right, I'll drop Black Knight in B tier, and we can move on to All-Stars Racing. So why did we drive cars instead of running on foot? Because those cars were badass. Duh. Also, we gotta make it fair for everyone who can't run fast anyways. It was so awesome to get to meet all our fellow Sega friends again. It had been so long. Although this game is definitely a clone of a certain franchise that shall not be named, I believe it is a decent entry and deserved B tier. All right then, next up is Sonic 4. This game is pretty mid, not gonna lie. Definitely mid. How dare this game try to disguise itself as a sequel to one of the best games of all time, Instant F tier. All right, I wouldn't go that low. Episode 1 is definitely mid, although Episode 2 offers a bit more by adding things such as Metal Sonic and myself, of course. They are still fake classic games and should be ranked lower! Alright, chill out, Egghead. I'll put Episode 1 in D tier and Episode 2 in C tier. Next is... Oh, God. The sooner that fucked up abomination is in F tier, the better. Enough said! Yeah, I don't want to get PTSD in the middle of the wreck right now, so F tier. I fucking hate Microsoft. Alrighty, now we're on to Sonic Colors. I liked Colors at first but it just feels generic nowadays, and it's barely even a 3D Sonic game. I never liked the Wisps, either. Most of them feel redundant and aren't fun to play. Not to mention the shit show release of Colors Ultimate. Let's just forget that version exists. For the original version of Colors, I'd say it gets no higher than B tier. Also, the DS version is just the better version, no cap. All right, we'll throw Colors in B tier. Speaking of the DS version, I gotta say I much preferred this version than the Wii version. It's basically Rush 3. Exactly. The Rush games were goaded, and this one is no different. The story is better. More characters show, including yours truly... And the final boss is a huge improvement. Yes, this is definitely the superior colors version. I would give it a solid A tier. Yeah, I like this version more too. A tier for sure. Works for me. Oh, and we got another goaded game up next. Generations is easily S tier without question. Absolutely S tier for sure. I loved revisiting updated versions of past areas we explored. Also, classic Sonic was so fun to play as. Modern Sonic was equally fun to play as too. All the old bosses coming back was awesome as well. Especially that chaos fight. I believe we are in agreement that this is the best game in the Boost era. With that in mind, it should go in S tier. Spitting facts with that S tier, but the handheld version of Generations is definitely inferior. This could have been another Rush game, but instead it's just boring. Enough said, just throw it in C tier. I never played it anyway. All right, and now we're getting into mobile games. Let's just get this over with. What do we think about Sonic Jump? That shitty doodle jump clone! Who cares? Just put it in C tier. It's mid just like our other attempts at mobile games. Kind of harsh, but I agree. Although All-Stars Racing Transformed was amazing, it's easily the best racing game we've gotten to date. I totally agree. Not to mention all the third-party rep we got, Wreck-It Ralph and fucking Team Fortress 2. This game was goaded. Holy shit, I love TF2. All right then, I think this game undoubtedly gets S tier as well. Sonic Dash is amongst our better mobile games, but it still is nothing more than a Temple Run clone. Yeah, this game was kind of wonky. I remember we got some crazy crossovers like Angry Birds and stuff. It's not bad, and I'd just give it B tier. Yeah, B tier works. 
Next up is Lost World, though. I didn't really like this game either, and the 3DS version was even worse. It kind of felt like a ripoff of that one series from that one franchise that won't be mentioned. The Deadly Six were lame, and the story was equally as lame. Also, they gave me a run button. Why the fuck would I ever need a goddamn run button, Sega? All right, calm down, bro. I'd put the Wii U version in C tier and the 3DS version in D tier, mid games overall. All right, now that that's over with, what do we think about Jump Fever? Point taken. C tier it is. Next up is Sonic Boom. Nope! There is no way in hell I'm doing this again! F tier both of these games right now! Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal both missed the mark and forgot what makes a Sonic game so unique. They're just shitty attempts at rebranding. F tier! Also, they made me a complete dumbass! My IQ is 11, not 10! Get it right, Sega! And our designs in general were all so shitty? Yeah, screw it F tier for both. Next up is Sonic Runners, another mobile game. You can't even play this game anymore! And from what I've seen, it was mid, so C tier! I never got to play it! I didn't even know it existed, so I don't give a fuck! You can still play Runner's Adventure, though. Still, it's really mid and just an average 2D runner. C tier for both, honestly! Yeah, that works. I just want to get these mobile games over with. Next is Dash 2 which for some fucking reason was themed after Boom. This one was just as generic as the first Dash, but it doesn't see tier due to being tied in with Boom. Disgusting! All right, all right, chill out, Egghead. We just have one more Boom game to go, and that's Fire and Ice. You know, somehow this one wasn't as shitty as the other console Boom games. The pacing was a bit better, and some parts were fun to play. I'd bump this to D tier. Yeah, I agree with Knuckles. For the last Boom game, it at least was a bit of an improvement. Although I despise Boom, I can agree with that. D tier it is then. Thankfully an absolute banger came out after all this Boom shit, none other than Sonic Mania. Oh hell yeah, you S tier that shit right now. An absolutely glorious return for the classic era with amazing graphics and music, a top tier game. Not to mention if we put this game any lower, we'll probably get absolutely demolished in the comments. So yeah. S-tier. Well, that was quick and easy. Thank you so much, Headcanon. But on the complete opposite side is Sonic Forces. Damn, this game was such a letdown. I never enjoyed it, and it's easily the worst boost game. A game where I finally take over the world and it comes out like this! What an absolute embarrassment! The level design was literally boost to win. The bosses were lame, and classic Sonic was there for no reason other than nostalgia. I'd give this D or F tier for sure. Well, if it's down to me, I'd throw it in D tier for not being completely broken or unfun to play. Anyways, next is Forces Speed Battle, which is surprisingly not that bad. It's honestly crazy that this game still gets updates. There's so many new characters from the movies to even the comics. I suppose it is not that bad. I'm just so tired of these half-baked mobile games. Aren't we all? I'll just throw this in B tier and move on to our latest racing game, Team Sonic Racing. Why the fuck did they get rid of all the other Sega characters? That was one of the best parts. Now it's just so lame. I agree, that was a very odd decision. This game is very lacking and has not gotten any updates. Throw it in C tier, Rodent. Currently throwing in C tier, and now we're on to the final game on the list and our latest adventure as of this video, Sonic Frontiers. God, I really like this game. It was a new idea pulled off, right? And it makes me really hopeful for the future of our franchise. I very much appreciated the more serious tone of this game. I also found the open world very satisfying to roam around in and complete objectives. And those supersonic boss fights, man. Those were so damn badass. The music went way too fucking hard for those segments. And to top it all off, we're getting more DLC and story later this year, including more playable characters. Oh, hell yeah. I'm so excited to be playable again. Well, with all that said, I honestly think we should end this off with an S tier, guys. That is fine with me. A nice end to this whole tier list. Alrighty then, Frontiers gets the S tier. And that's all she wrote, folks. Wow, this was honestly a lot of fun. Looking at the list, we still have a ton of bangers on our catalog. I guess sometimes we let the negative aspects of our franchise overshadow the genuinely fun games we have. I really had a lot of fun with this list. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Um, Eggman, are you gonna say something? Where in the actual fuck is Mean Bean Machine? Did you rodents remove it from this list? Wait, what? No, no, we didn't even make the list, dude! Quiet, fool! I'm going to take over the world in retaliation for this disrespect once and for all! <laughs> uh, should we do something about that? Nah, don't worry, you two. I'll be able to take care of him by myself. 
Thanks for joining the vid, though. No problem, big bro. We'll see you around. Yeah, see you later, homie. Peace, y'all. Up, over, and gone. Well, what do you want to do now, Tails? Want to play some Minecraft, Nux? Oh, hell yeah! Minecraft is goaded! I heard that you two were gonna play some Minecraft. How the hell did you find that out? We just said that. That's not important. Do you have room for one more? Yeah, I guess you can join if you want to, Shadow. Sonic's gone right now, so we could use one more. It's settled then. Let's get that damn Ender Dragon. Yo, if I'm being honest, the Generations remake looks pretty cool, all things considered. What do you guys think? It looks fine and all, but I for real hate that name. Like they could have picked anything else. But they decided to go with a name that's making the internet run wild. Gens is a peak game, and the Shadow shit looks dope too. I'm grabbing it when it comes out for sure. Man, all this talk about new games just has me itching to talk about more Sonic games. It's just fun to talk about our franchise, whether it's cool stuff or ugly stuff. I know, right? Too bad we went over practically everything in the first tier list we did. Yeah, we covered our whole catalog. We don't really got anything else, aside from superstars, I guess. Oh yeah, that wasn't out when we made the tier list. What were your thoughts on the game, boys? Oh, you know, it was fine. It sure was a 2D Sonic game with co-op. Yeah, it sure was that. The skins were neat, I guess. Also, Fang coming back was cool, too. All right, uh, cool. <clears throat> fan games! Wait, what's up next? I just had a brain blast, guys. Why don't we rank fan games this time round? We said we should do it eventually anyhow. Oh yeah, the fans have made so much awesome content over the years. It's insane how many Sonic fan games there are now. That sounds like a rad idea. Okay then. I'll find a tier list to use for the vid. And for the record, we aren't going to be covering every single fan game out there since there's already a shit ton. Yeah, we should definitely just do most of the well-known ones for now, but if anyone wants to see a part two, then let us know. And thanks everyone for the support on the channel. We passed 5,000 subs just a few weeks ago. Keep up the good work, team. Yeah, what the knucklehead said. We love you all, but anyways, we got the list right here with a good chunk of fan games. Looks like we got Sonic 3D and 2D up first. So for context, this fan game reimagines Sonic 3D Blast's general story and levels in the style of the Genesis games. It's a pretty cool idea that's executed really well in my opinion. Yeah, the sprite work for this game is totally fantastic too, especially for Rusty Ruin. That zone looks fire. There's tons of extra content as well, like achievements, a special stage zone, and a ton of new characters, including Bluckles. It's literally just me, but blue. And I love all the Act 1 boss fights. There's so many returning faces like Fang, Tails Doll, and all the Mecha Sonics in a single fight. Don't forget about Metal Knuckles. More like Middle Knuckles, heh. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Fair enough. So overall 3D and 2D is pretty solid overall, and I'm good with giving it anything B or higher. I think starting us off with a strong A tier sounds about right? Yeah, that vibes. Alrighty, A tier it is. Now we're on to a two-in-one deal here. Sonic before the sequel and after the sequel. Some of the first Sonic fan games to ever get proper attention, they may be old, but they're still gems. On God Knucklehead, I remember being seriously impressed by these. They basically try to fill in the gaps between the first couple Sonic games, which is such a neat idea. They both look incredible. And I love the little transitions that happen when you go too far up or down a zone. The music also slaps hard. Although I think it goes without saying that after the sequel is way better than before. It's all pretty much due to before being pretty outdated, while after got a good upgrade between development times. Yeah, that's fair. Although the last thing I gotta point out is that these games actually put in cutscenes to classic style Sonic games. That's fucking dope as hell, and give them major points. Oh hell yeah! Those Junio Sonic cutscenes will always have a special place in my heart. So, I think it would be fair overall to give before a B tier, and after an A tier. They aren't the best in the world, but they sure are solid and hold up even to today. You're spitting facts right now, knucklehead. B tier and A tier respectively for the sequel duo. Now we're on to a unique one here. What do we think about Battle R? Battle R is definitely interesting since it takes a pretty obscure Sonic game, that being Sonic R, and turns it into an upgraded version complete with Dreamcast-styled graphics. Not to mention there's tons of zones to race on from all different Sonic games like Adventure 2, Colors, and Heroes. But what makes this game really fresh is the multiplayer and the unique power-ups each character gets. Also, the cool unique chows you can collect and customize. That's such a neat add-on. My chow was badass. And despite 
that, you never beat me in a race ever. Oh, hush it, furball. You know that my character is slow as shit in this game. Skill, skill issue. issue. I'm gonna make your faces a skill issue in a second. All right, chill out, Red. I really quickly have to bring up that the controls and camera in this game are a bit iffy, and the game in general still needs some polish to make it great. Still, though, I think a solid B tier is in order here. Yeah, that sounds about right. B tier it is. Next up on our list is Classic and Classic 2. Just some good old-fashioned classic Sonic fan games. The sprite work is great, and the music is tight. Both the first and second game are very high quality, and honestly could probably be mistaken for actual Sonic games released back then. They fit in so well for what they're supposed to be. There really isn't much needed to be said, other than they are in fact good classic Sonic games. I'll throw them both in A tier. Yeah, some of these are pretty self-explanatory and don't really need much time to discuss if you guys couldn't tell. Hey, less words for some means we can get to more words for the cool shit. So true, Red. Speaking of cool shit, next up on our list is Sonic Fan Remix. So when I first saw this game, I immediately got Sonic 4 vibes since it kind of just has that general look and feel. The good thing about this game, though, is that it's actually fun to play and looks damn awesome, unlike that piece of shit 4. Yeah, the level design is good, the physics are pretty solid, and I love all the sound effects used in the three levels like the water sounds. That's the one issue, though. This is the first game on the list that was straight up abandoned and left unfinished. So there's only three levels. So lame. But yeah, the website for the game isn't even up anymore, which puts it down by quite a few points in my opinion. Yeah, it's tough, and I feel like it probably could have gotten an A tier if it was finished. For now though, I'll be sticking it in C tier. Still worth checking out though. Oh man, next is Sonic Nexus. This one came out way back in the late 2000s if I remember right. Yeah, you'd be right, Nux. This is another oldie. It was actually being worked on using Christian Whitehead's retro engine. Although I think it lost production when he was hired by Sega. Yeah, something like that. Now there isn't much to be said about it. It's a solid two-act fan game that's largely inspired by Sonic CD. The music is nice, my sprite is good, but other than that, nothing to write home about. Yeah, I'd just give it another C tier. It's fine. All right then. All right, next is... Oh dear lord. Oh, what's that? Sonic Omens? You mean the game with stolen music from Cars 2? You mean the game with shitty voice acting? You mean the game that for some reason brought back fucking Chris Thorndike? You mean the game that had a tedious, boring as fuck, annoying tower level with a tree? You mean the game that had an owner that set up a Patreon where you had to pay to play early versions of the game, despite the fact that you're literally not supposed to make profit off a fan game, but instead, they did it anyway, and even put random ass who are codes around the game to make it nothing more than a soulless failure that everyone loathes now. Yeah, fuck that shit. All right, coming off that mistake of a game. Next up is Sonic Overture. And my god, this game is crazy cool. It's totally cool. My fucking it's a prequel ears. to the first Sonic game, and it adds so many elements from the concepts we saw for the creation of the franchise. Yeah, they put in Eggman's old pajama design, and even the rabbit that Sonic was going to be before he turned into a spiky shit stain. <laughs> Those were the days where he didn't take me too seriously. If only that egghead knew what hell was coming. Even though this game only has two zones, it seems to still be getting worked on, so we could see a full version sometime in the future. With that being said, I think we should give it A tier for now. Yeah, that works. Maybe it can be bumped up to S tier if it's finished. All right, now we're on to Retro Sonic. This is another pretty old one. It came out in 2007, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure the creators were also asked to work on the mobile ports for the classic games, so it's kind of like Nexus in that regard. Yeah, this one has a lot of CD-inspired stuff, and the level design is pretty solid as well. Although I do remember crashing when I found a special stage ring, so that was weird. Yeah, this game was abandoned kind of like Nexus, so there isn't much to say other than it's fine. I'd go B-tier tops. Same here, since we need to get to this next entry pronto. Damn right we do. All right, B-tier for Retro Sonic. And next up, of course, is the one and only, Sonic Robo Blast 2. If this doesn't go anywhere other than S, I'm offing myself. That's a pretty extreme Nox, but yeah, Robo Blast 2 is peak as fuck. So for those who, for some reason, don't know, Robo Blast 2 is a Doom mod which takes 2D Sonic sprites and puts it into a 3D environment. But the best part about this game is that it's completely modable. There's literally hundreds of character mods, level mods, so much cool shit that's been made. And even then, the base game is great. The levels are interesting and fun to go through. They brought back Fang, and you can even play in multiplayer. 
This game has it all! Yeah, Robo Blast 2 is an easy S tier. If y'all haven't played it, then do it right this instant. Kinda sad that that game is better than like 80% of our official games. Shut up, bro. We have mods too. For some games, at least. Speaking of mods, one of the RB2 mods got its own spot on the list. That, of course, being Roboblast 2 Kart. Oh my god, one of the best racing games I've ever played. Facts, little buddy. Not to mention this mod has its own mods. And this mod is a mod of a Doom mod. Modception! Okay, don't break your brain, knucklehead. But yeah, this game gets a S tier as well, no question. Seriously, check out Roboblast 2, y'all. Shouldn't we talk about Roboblast 1 now, though? Oh yeah, the first game. I gotta say, it looks uh, fantastic. Guys? It clearly took inspiration from Mania with all the smooth animation going on. Yeah, for real. Again, it's just a two-act demo. Hello? So there isn't too much to play, but it's so smooth. And the music is great. Yeah, it definitely isn't as impressive as Robo Blast 1, but I'm fine with giving it a strong A tier for now. Guys! What the fuck do you want, Tails, you little bitch? That isn't the original Robo Blast 1. It's a remake. Wait, really? Well, what does the original look like then? All right, here, I'll show you. Oh, uh, ew! That's, um, yeah, I can't defend that, D-tier. All right, we got a few more to go. Next up is Time Attacked. Time Attack? Man, this shit came out in 2003. It's basically ancient. Damn, that's freaking centuries in fan game time. Yeah, I can't say this game has aged well at all, really. The controls aren't too great, the screen is small, and the music is really crunchy. It's just what happens when something is left in the dust to time. Although I will admit my sprite actually doesn't look too bad. Gotta say. Other than the sprite, the game is mid nowadays. I say C tier at best. Yeah, C tier is fair. All right, now we're on to Time Twisted. This one's neato. Yeah, I remember that this was one of the first fan games that really stood out with all the custom sprite work, new music, and even some cutscenes. This game definitely takes a lot of notes from CD again, mainly due to the past and future post returning. That's cool in my book since CD is fire. The cutscenes do show their age, but the level design, cool sprites, and returning mechanics make Time Twisted a certified classic fan game in my opinion. I feel like this one could have totally benefited from a sequel though. Yeah, Time Twisted 2, Triple T, make it happen. I'd say this is another solid A tier, big bro. Sounds about right to me. All right, we got four games left. Next up is an absolute banger in Triple Trouble 16-bit. This game does exactly what it wants to do. Put Triple Trouble on the Genesis. It does that in a spot-on way. Triple Trouble has always felt like the best 8-bit game for me. If the fan game was actually how the game went officially, then I feel it could have a chance to honestly be the best classic Sonic game. Definitely without question one of the best fan games out there. The music is great, and the level design and enemies, while consistent to the 8-bit original, still feel fresh. Hats off to everyone who made this insane remake. Is it really an S tier though? It has the drop dash too. Well, guess it's an S tier then. Now we're on to Sonic Utopia. Damn, this game is tragic. It's so good, but just never got completed or improved on outside of one level. This game ran with, pun intended, the idea of an open world Sonic game much earlier than Frontiers did. It genuinely looks so good, and the area you get to play in can occupy you for hours. And it feels so good to play! Like, it is so satisfying to gain speed and do crazy jumps without losing any momentum. Speaking of which, the momentum feels perfect in this game. There's tons of secret areas to the side of the level to explore, and the Green Hill Remix sounds great! This could be the best Sonic fan game. Or at the very least, the best 3D Sonic fan game if it was just finished but now it's stuck in a one-level state, and I don't feel like it can get an S like that. Honestly, I feel like it could get an A considering how good it is just on one level alone. Yeah, it should get an A at best. Its impact was way too noteworthy for anything less. All right, that makes sense. Second to last on this list is Sonic XG. I actually hadn't heard of this game until recently. It's a direct sequel to Sonic and Knuckles, which is something I'm surprised people haven't done before. Yeah, I mean, it makes the Death Egg crash into Angel Island. That's a pretty cool twist in my opinion. Gotta say that the frame rate isn't too good on XG and kind of makes the game feel slower than it should be but it isn't too big of a deal. Overall, the game isn't too remarkable, but it ain't bad by any means. I think that earns it a solid B. Sounds fair to me. And now we're on to the last fan game of the day, that being Sonic Zero. Okay, so this is unfortunately one that's currently stuck in demo form. However, I immediately need to praise the fact that this is one of the only fan games to have a hub world for a 2D game. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll give it that, but 
there really isn't much to this game in its state. One of the first levels is just a big water level, with some good sprite work, I guess. Yeah, and it sure doesn't help that the demo was released in 2012, and we've since gotten, like, nothing. It sucks to end the list on some mid, but that's just how it goes sometimes. C-tier for me. C-tier for me, too. Alright, and with that, another tier list is wrapped up with a nice little bow. Good job, fan game devs. You guys are crazy awesome. And there are plenty of other fan games that weren't on the list. You all should totally play them. They're so amazing. Not to mention the fan output is better than the Slop Sega cook. Shut up, Nux. Jeez. Okay. Well, with that out of the way, what do we got planned next, boys? I'll probably find another game for us to play. It's been a while, anyhow. Sounds good. I'm ready to win another one and leave you two in the dust. In your dreams, little bro. I'll catch you guys later, but be prepared for the almighty knucklehead to rain down his fury. Catch you two in the next one. Peace, y'all. Ah, another chill call in the VC. I can't see anything going wrong this fine, fine day of ours, gentlemen. It's truly a spectacular feeling indeed. Truly a fine day, Sir Knuckles. Ah, yes. Indubitably, a very nice day. There won't be very many splendid days quite like this one. So, is this supposed to be like a bit? Or do you two have a motive for acting all posh all of a sudden? Nah, I just like saying posh words. Like indubitably. That's such a freaking good word. Indubitably. It's very indubitable that indubitably is a fun word to say indeed. Anyways, what are we gonna do for today, big bro? Eh, I was thinking a tier list. But maybe one with not too many entries? I don't feel like sitting here for a full 30 minutes talking about whatever, considering we've been on a roll with moderating the server. True. We're getting invites from most of the gang now. Well considering that this fine, glorious day couldn't get worse. I'm up for anything right now. Actually, I think I got a good idea. Why don't we try ranking the Sega consoles? There aren't too many of them, and it'll make for an interesting topic of discussion since not a lot of Sonic fans were around to play them. Hey, that's a good idea for once. Screw you. I'm definitely down for trashing on Sega a little bit more than per usual. Dude, Nux quit it with the Sega hate. Like, what the heck would even happen to us if they found out we were shit-talking them like this? Brother, nothing would happen! What are they gonna do? Get rid of us? We're the flagship franchise of Sega! They aren't gonna do shit! It just feels kinda wrong talking crap behind the backs of the dudes who literally conceived us, but whatever. Guys, guys, let's settle down. It's a good day, remember? Indubitably and all that. Yeah, you got a point. Nothing's gonna go wrong anyways. We'll be A-OK. -okay. You know, now that you said that, something's definitely going to go wrong. Was that a fucking Smash Bros intro? Oh, god damn it. You just had to say something about nothing going wrong, didn't you, Nux? Now we got this freaking tin can in our VC. Hey, I was just saying how it is, bro. You got to be positive with this indubitably. All right, enough with the indubitably bit. Okay, Metal, what do you want? Uh... What did he say? We don't speak in beep boop language, dummy. Speak English. Uh, I think he's typing something out in chat. Wait, how the hell did Metal even get in here in the first place? Probably had something to do with Eggman again. I mean, if he could hack his way in, then I don't see why he couldn't get Metal in here too. Bro, seriously? I am the real Sonic. We've gone over this like 50 different times, you tin can. I'm not gonna bother, bro. He can't do anything anyways, so I don't really care if he stays or not. Okay, okay, I got this. Metal, do you know what Sega is? Okay, and you know, they made consoles, right? Okay, do you think you can just sit there, be chill, and help us with a tier list? The suspense is killing- Shush, Nux! All right, that works for me. Looks like Mr. CD is going to be joining us, fellas. Yeah, I don't really care if it's just for a video. No bad blood here, right? I just want to do a damn tier list, man. I'm bored. All right, all right, give me a second. I'll go ahead and find a good one real quick. Actually, while we're waiting, I think we should bring something up regarding the channel. Ain't that right, Nux? Wait, what? Oh, oh, yeah. I almost forgot. We got channel memberships, folks. Give us your money now. No, I... Nux, that's not how you... Ugh, okay. Knuckles is right about that, everyone. We recently activated channel memberships. If you didn't know, that allows you guys to gain special content for this channel. 
for a small price. Members can choose what games we play and what tier lists we do every once in a while. You can even choose which guests from our squad get to join. It all depends on the most liked suggestions. Although keep in mind that not every video will be member voted. We still have plenty of our own ideas. You'll also get these sick-ass badges that get displayed next to your username to show you're a part of the squad. We'll be hearting and replying to your comments, too. If you have any questions, then they will for sure be answered. You'll get to watch our videos a little earlier than everyone else. So that's an immediate bragging rights point right there. And last but not least, every member's username will be proudly presented at the end of every video. Ain't that something? You guys are kind of sort of sharing the video with me. And to keep the ad stuff short, we'll wrap it up there. But just keep in mind that you, by all means, do not need to get a membership. It's just something to help support us and get some extra perks while doing it. Thanks, y'all. All right, you got that tier list, Sonic? Sure do. Get ready, everyone, because first up is the SG-1000, Sega's first console that was unfortunately Japan exclusive. It only lasted for about two years as well. Wait, really? Wow, I always thought the Master System was Sega's first. I had no idea this existed, to be honest. Yeah, the SG is a pretty obscure piece of hardware, but it honestly isn't too bad for Sega's first. It ain't anything special either nowadays, though. Can you guys name a few games that were particular highlights on the system? Maybe so newcomers can play them through totally real and legal methods. Wink wink. Sure thing, buddy. There ain't any Sonic games on this since we didn't even exist back then yet. But one of my favorites is Flicky. It's technically the first Sonic game if you really think about it. You just run around and collect baby birds while avoiding cats and stuff. It's pretty fun. I'm a big fan of good old Space Invaders and Galaga, both of which were on the SG. I'm not going to explain them because if you haven't played either of these games yet in your life, there's something wrong with you. Hero ain't bad, but you still aren't me, you dumb metalhead. Honestly, I can't really say much else for the SG. The fact that it was Japan exclusive definitely didn't help, and it's way overshadowed by the later consoles that Sega released. Maybe we should give it C tier then? It should at least stay out of D, out of respect for it being the first. Sounds about right, C tier it is. Now we're on to the actual first console to be distributed to a larger audience, the Sega Master System. Here we are. The Master System was released right around when Nintendo released the NES. It was Sega's first true attempt at breaking into the home console scene. Yeah, and it had a pretty decent lifespan too. I like that it got revision models and even some accessories like a light gun. And the lineup of games was much better and included a lot of Sega staples like Fantasy Star, Prince of Persia, the Disney Illusion games, and of course, the 8-bit Sonic games. Said Sonic games were much better on Master System compared to Game Gear thanks to the screen size, by the way. They didn't port over Triple Trouble for some reason, though. Yeah, but at least Sonic Chaos is pretty alright. I think that the Master System overall was much better than the IG-1000. What's your thoughts on this, Metal? That egghead really needs to give him his voice back, dear lord. Facts. Facts. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a respectable console, but later entries did it better. B tier for the Master System. Sounds good to me. But now we're on to the most prominent and well-known Sega console of them all. That, of course, being the Sega Genesis. Oh, hell yeah! One of the first 16-bit consoles to really hit it off. Not to mention how damn good that controller felt in your hands. It's also when Sega truly entered the console wars and came out on top for a bit until Nintendo released the Super Nintendo. The 16-bit on the Genesis was crisp, facts. and the sound effects that came out of each prominent title were golden. Also facts. The game lineup was crazy, too. I don't think it needs to be said that the classic Sonic games were absolutely fire, especially Three and Knuckles. So true, Blue Buddy. Also, the introduction of lock-on technology was sick. I remember my mind being fucking blown when I stuck those two cartridges together. And you can't forget about the other bangers that came out on Gens. Some of my personal favorites were the later Fantasy Star sequels and Rocket Knight Adventures. Oh, hell yeah. Absolute classics. Those are indeed fire, but I personally enjoyed some good old Streets of Rage. And how could I forget Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3? That port was freaking sweet back then. All of those favorites are valid as fuck. I'll just throw in Contra Hard Corps and Gunstar Hero for good measure. Point being, the gens did not only have the power to back up its games, but the standout games themselves were all gems. Uh, I guess you could say it was a gems collection. Fuck you, dumb robot. That horrific pun aside, 
Yeah, the Genesis is an easy S tier without question. And while we're at it, I'll just throw the Sega Nomad in A tier too. It's basically a handheld that played Genesis games for those who didn't know. But now we're on a bit of a controversial one here. The Sega CD. I personally didn't think this had much to offer, honestly. Seriously, like it's barely even a console. It's more of an extension to the regular Genesis. <laughs> S-tier? You're seriously tweaking now, Tin Can. Maybe Egghead needs to rewire your doodads or whatever. I like Sonic CD just as much as the next guy, but like... That's one of the only good games that I can name off the top of my head. The rest was just FMV garbage. I actually think Heart of the Alien and Snatcher are pretty hidden gems for the CD. But other than that, yeah, the lineup of games it had was kind of mediocre. Couldn't have said it better myself. It was a mid-add-on for an already near-perfect console back then. But I'd still give it a B tier. Partly not to piss off metal too badly, but also because some of the consoles we're getting to next are way worse. Sounds about fair. B tier for the CD. Sorry, Metal. That's just how it goes. Wait, what the fu- Oh, huh, he's gone. Strange. Anyways, what do we think about the Sega Pico? You gross baby console. Yeah, this thing was meant to be a shitty kid's console and nothing more. Like, did it have any decent games? Uh, nope. I, I don't think so. Actually, it had one extremely fantastic game. Oh, God. One that I just love coming to over and over. Don't you say it, Sonic! It's Tails and the Music Maker, baby. <laughs> the Pico's going in D tier, and that's final. Move on right now! I don't know what's happening, but you might not want to get so passionate over a shitty kid's toy, Tails. Uh, it doesn't matter, but you're right. I'm calm now, thanks. Uh, all right then. So now with that out of the way... We're gonna move over to the Sega 32 Easiest steer of my life, bro. Such a god -ear system, the birth of the great Knuckles Chaotix, an absolute masterpiece of a game. Without this, we wouldn't have the best game to be ever made. Extra Ghost Guns Live Night Show Pop Whoa! I'll keep a good spy! I I I don't I really just don't know what to say at this point. Well I do, and that's that the 32X is even worse than the CD, and Knuckles Chaotix does not save it whatsoever. That's Cap and you know it! Besides, the 32X has plenty of other fantastic games to hold it up strong. Oh yeah? Like what exactly? Well there's Virtua Fighter, there's yeah, I'm taking that silence as there not being that many games to make the 32X even worth it. Still, though, this has to go above that trash-ass baby toy, right? Yeah, I'll give you that. The 32X can go in C tier, then. All right. Sega's penultimate console is the Sega Saturn. And I actually kind of have a soft spot for it, not gonna lie. It's not a terrible console by any means. It has tons of good games, especially all of Sega's arcade ports. But the PlayStation came out around this time and completely overshadowed the Saturn. Exactly! Like, we can't forget that this console gave our homie Knights their first ever game. Speaking of which, Knights into Dreams is mad underrated. Yeah, spit those facts, knucklehead. I also enjoyed myself a bit of Radiant Silver Gun and X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Damn, it sucks that this console flopped. It just kind of came down to circumstances at the end of the day. Still, though, I think the Saturn still holds up strong today, and it's easily one of Sega's better consoles. Yeah, I'd give that little gem a solid A tier if that sounds good. I was thinking the same thing, A tier for the Saturn. Now on to the last original Sega console that came out all the way back in 1998. That, of course, being the Sega Dreamcast. Man, this thing had so many fire titles on it. Again, though, Sega was getting completely beat out by its competitors. I mean, the Nintendo 64 had just dropped. The GameCube, PS2, and even the Xbox were on the way. Not to mention that the Saturn's underperformance really didn't help things either. Yeah! Sega at this point wasn't really seen as mainstream anymore. Oh, the fall of the mighty. Mighty? Where? Oh my god. Knuckles' negative IQ aside, the Dreamcast totally stands tall alongside the Genesis. I mean, it has Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 for crying out loud. Can't forget about the other new IPs that were introduced, especially Jet Set Radio. That game is so freaking good even to today's standards. Soul Calibur, Resident Evil, and Shenmue were some of my personal favorites. Like, I just can't wrap my head around this. The Dreamcast was just as good as the other consoles. It just came down to poor performance in terms of sales. F 
Fuck capitalism! Well, that and the fact that Sega didn't have many notable IPs. But I'm glad we can all agree the Dreamcast was and still is pretty damn good, you guys. For real. And I think that gives the Dreamcast a very respectable S tier. Not bad, gentlemen. That's another tier list for the books. Who knows? Maybe Sega will one day somehow spew out a console again, and it'll end up being a big success. We can only hope, Nux. We can only hope. Still, though, this was a lot of fun as per usual. Thanks, Sonic. No worries, guys. Thanks for helping out on this. Now, what game should we get to next? Actually, I was thinking about a little bit of... Why, hello there again, you miserable little pain in the asses! I'm back once more! Oh, uh, this guy? Jeez, Seriously? Come on, really? Fuck out you lame here, as you fuck! Little bitch. Yes, of course, get it out of your insignificant little feelings. Anyways, a little badnik just so happened to tell me that you all shat on the Sega CD, hmm? I wouldn't call putting something in B tier shitting on it, but whatever. What's it to you, Egghead? Well, I just so happen to very much enjoy the Sega CD. Dear God, this Not to yapper? mention I've been feeling particularly like tormenting my least favorite little rodents. Do you all know what that means? That you'll leave our lives and never, ever, 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 ever return? That'd be cool. Wrong, you red shit stain. Come on out. My fabulous creations of many eras. Wait. So let me get this straight. Yes? You decided to infiltrate our Discord server. Yep. Made your three copies of me Discord accounts. That's right. And then made them join the VC. Exactly. You're using your brain for once, you idiotic little rodent. Well, what are you going to do now? We're just in a VC, remember? I'm glad you asked. Since I have no way of physically tormenting any of you, I'm just going to go into lengthy detail as to why you are wrong about the CD. Oh, really? I'd love to hear that then. Go ahead, Egghead. Fantastic. Now, a quick history lesson. The Sega CD was not exactly a console itself, but more of an add-on that connected straight to the Sega Gen- Yeah, fuck that. I ain't here for a history lesson. Now, Metal, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and assume you and your little bucket heads over there did not, in fact, want to make a Discord account at all. <laughs> dude, Tails, remember they can't talk? And I don't want to sit around and wait for this Nokia looking ass dude to type a whole essay in chat. You seem to forget that I gained the ability to speak, Faker. Not surprising, considering only a fake Sonic would forget something so simple. Oh yeah, I forgot this fucking fossil actually got a voice box. Can you translate your little cuz, Mecca? I will, but not because you asked me. The real Sonic does not take orders from fakes. <laughs> I see! Very interesting, my brothers! Very interesting indeed! Okay, so what did they say? They said that the annoying yellow fox and the stupid red echidna have bad opinions on nearly everything they speak of. What the hey, hell, fuck you, bitch? you, Tin Can! As for the fake Sonic, he's all that but also a faker who, and this is not my words by the way, gets no bitches and will never be real even if he tries, you fucking fraud! Geez, Silver, you gotta chill, bro. Never in my life did I think I'd get dissed by a piece of scrap in a Discord VC. Well, at least things can't get any worse. Wait, is it time to diss on that damn faker? Mother f And here's a huge special thanks to Raquel Gomez, Money Dynamic Matanya, Uzuka Scarlaboshi, and Mr. Troll for becoming our awesome members. Take care, y'all.